It's not that what Trump did was necessarily the worst in every case, but it's the capricious nature with which he operated that was most scary to me. And the way he would speak to the masses, the public, that really made me uh, trepidatious. And imagine a Democrat. And I know we've had some awful Democrats. I know Obama acted very messianic, which was creepy. But imagine just a sneering, um, kind of funny Democrat just riling up the audience, talking out of his butt all day, saying the most outlandish things, and everyone immediately considers it to be true because he said it. That's like Hugo Chavez type stuff, only it's happening in the Republican Party. Both sides are destroying the institutions of, uh, that made America great. I mean, a peaceful transition of power from one president to another, the one commander in chief handing over the reins of power to the other in a peaceful way, since George Washington, our first president, has been one of the wonderful things about America. We do not settle political debates by violence in the streets. We settle it by intellectual argument and by elections, by the exercise of free speech and our rights. That's how we do it. When Trump was still saying it was stolen to, from me and was encouraging people to come out on January 6th, what is he doing but attacking American institutions at least as bad. They what they became violent. And then you look at the left, they want to get rid of the filibuster, the electoral college, uh, you name it. What's disturbing is that both sides now have really thrown in any respect for American institutions, the American constitution. I guess, so you uh, think the proper response to Candace Owens' support of Kanye West would be to fire her? I don't have a proper uh, course of action for Ben Shapiro because I disagree with him even having a conservative movement. I don't I don't think uh, forming a big tent of anti leftists was a good strategy because they don't really stand for very many good things. It clearly uh, liberty was something they were willing to sell as at the first uh, challenging point because, oh, no, big tech is using liberty their liberty. So we need to break up big tech and use antitrust legislation. They basically, they use every tired leftist argument that, you know, Tea Party conservatives used to debunk 12, 13 years ago. Republicans didn't really stand for very much. They were, they were the party of proving, no, we care about the poor just as much as Democrats. We just want to help them in a different way. They're never sufficiently the party of real principles of individual rights and of capitalism. So it, it was their own um, mealy-mouthed milk toastness that was their downfall, not so much the fact that they were too principled. But they, there is this popular narrative on the right that's like, oh, we were too principled, and the left took advantage of that. But I uh, would say check your premises. I think it was that really uh, conservatives and you know Republicans, they were not really principled enough, or the principles they did take seriously were the mystical and uh, collectivistic principles. So. So they were That's morally was... they were morally disarmed in a sense and couldn't really fight back and that made them milk toasty. It wasn't that they were rest uh, restraining themselves and and uh, restraining themselves from acting undiplomatically. They just didn't have the the stuff. Yeah, Rand cared a lot about the philosophical I influences of a political party or a political movement. So for that reason she really really rejected the libertarian party and the libertarian movement because she saw them as hippies of the right. They were like, like, like hippies in, with their incoherence and general emotionalism and lack of uh, a philosophical leg to stand on. Just that they happen to be like more affiliated with capitalism and like individual liberty. I mean, um, Rand Rand was the only one to testify before Congress who said, "Why are you? Why do you fear Russia so much?" And they'll be lucky if if one single missile gets off the silo. They're they're defined by incompetence, not power. Now, it may be that they can do war well, that's the one thing that they can do well, but I seriously doubt it. If they had, I think, 19% of our GDP when they're at their economic height, they've always been weak. We see them now. They, they, they melt in Afghanistan. They melt in the Ukraine. They're nothing. They're nothing. God knows that the Democrats are horrible, but I mean, but, you know, as Rand pointed out, if there's a bad idea, let's say increase, increase regulation, increased um, subsidies or entitlements, stuff like that, you know, it's probably a Democrat idea, but a god awful idea, the EPA, breaking up big business, antitrust and all of that type of thing, subsidies at a level that's supposed to engineer the whole economy and, you know, protectionism that keeps out imports, all of these things. I would observe here that um, Trump was outspending Obama before COVID. I want to repeat that and say it slowly so that all my Republican friends get this point. Trump is no friend of capitalism. 
Uh, he was outspending Obama before COVID. Yeah, ben Shapiro and Dennis Prager, they think they see Candace Owens as this godsend. Oh, wow. A black girl who hates the left and hates Democrats and can, you know, really help change the culture. OK, but you're also giving a very inexperienced, very hot headed girl who never apologizes for anything, never admits she was wrong about anything. Uh, constantly using charlatan tactics, constantly vilifying anyone who disagrees with her and peddling in conspiracy junk. I think a couple of years ago, Candace tweeted like, the left doesn't want us to interview Alex Jones, so I'm going to interview Alex Jones. And I, I think the Daily Wire wouldn't let her do it. But nonetheless, like that's her approach to things. Whatever the left says don't do, we're going to do. And so, yeah, if that's the type of person you're bringing on board in the first place, that tells me a little bit something about uh, your the bar where your bar is set, yeah. and then and then uh, if you, you you can only kick the can down the road for so long before it blows up. Until and unless capitalism can be defended on the profit motive, because of the profit motive, you're damn right the profit motive. It we will continue in this direction.